Out of most movies in the world, if you told me that a Puss in Boots sequel would be an interesting, well shot, engaging masterpiece, I probably would have laughed it off. That is until how much I heard people talking about it and the amount of praise it was getting. I do think that describing a family friendly movie as a kids movie sometimes feels a little bit degrading to it. But to me at the time, a Puss in Boots sequel did feel like a film that would be aimed at a much younger audience. Now I'm probably quite late to the scene and I don't have a cinema near me, but I decided to give it a watch. <laughs> and boy was I in for a show. Honestly, I don't go out of my way to watch Puss. I've seen a bit of the first movie simply because my siblings were watching it. And no, I haven't watched any of the Shrek movies either. I haven't watched any of them yet, I meant. Even with that being said, I found this movie doesn't lean very much at its prequel. And I find it that a good thing, because first of all, the first one wasn't exactly the best film in the world, and secondly, rather than trying to drain every last drop from an old story, these Giga Chad story writers decided to compose a completely fresh and breathtaking story that fits multiple main characters and villains without it feeling scattered or confusing. I don't want to spoil too much, but a quick overview of our main character's storyline wouldn't hurt. We start off with Puss in Boots living out his lives recklessly, since he knows he has multiple lives because he's a cat. Cats have multiple lives by the way. Things are going well for him as he goes about his existence being a hero slash celebrity. But all those quickly fall apart when he's confronted by death. Personally, I think it's one of the best entrances of a villain in a movie in movie history. Most of us would have expected death to make a dramatic entry with black smoke and a harsh voice. But no, instead he's quite quite the normal guy. That is simply just doing his job. Not exactly a normal job, but you know what I mean. I don't know about you, but I absolutely love mirror shots. People have already done entire breakdowns of this scene, but just a quick overview I wanted to say that this was a very well put together scene with feeding with a feeling fresh every time you rewatch it. Puss decides to retire and live out his final life. And in doing so, he makes friend with a dog uh, named Perio. During his stay, he's recruited by Goldilocks to steal a map from Jack Horner. That will direct anyone to the Wishing Star that will grant one wish. Puss sees this as an excellent chance to get back his lives, and he goes to steal the map. He meets Kitty Softpaws on the way, who is also wanting to steal the map. And the best way to go about this is to work together. Throughout the film, Puss either catches glimpses of death or is haunted by his presence, which is truly a great way to build up her villain, knowing that there's no escape from him and feeling scared even when he isn't anywhere to be seen. I find this much more terrifying than having him in our faces every five minutes, which is good since there are two other groups that are after Puss to get back the map. There are a lot of movies that struggle with having too many main characters as well, and trying to give them the screen time they deserve is kind of difficult. Especially when you want to have a flowing storyline. A very brave choice, I think, but they really definitely paid off. Uh, if you haven't gotten the message yet, then I'll just say it straight off. The film is good. Watch it. Unlike many other movies these days that try to break the fourth wall and preach to the viewers, and in some cases, telling them to <laughs> off. Yeah, no one is watching you anyways. Maybe it's just me, but this one actually is a movie that welcomes us in. <laughs> Wait, that sounded wrong. Um... <laughs> is a movie that welcomes us and tells a story that's engaging and flowing. The characters aren't forced and diverse, and all of them fit into the story quite nicely. We have our main character Puss who is a brave and reckless hero, who is used to having multiple leaves to turn over when the time calls for it, but completely changes character when death shows up. Uh, even when he's back to himself, he still isn't the same hero as he was before his encounter with death. And I also think Perio was a nice side character. Throughout the movie, he's definitely the humorous char the character of the trio, but I never really found him annoying or out of place, which is quite rare for this kind of character. I generally find it really irritating when you get these mindless comic relief side characters that just tend to spew out jokes regardless of the situation. I mean, it's funny for a short time, but quickly comes obnoxious and dumb. And I don't think anyone could imagine Jar Jar Binks coming um, puss during his panic attack. Now, the movie is fun and amazingly shot with smooth transitions from the 24 frames, your standard animation, to that amazing scratchy 12 frames that you tend to see in like anime. Yeah, especially during the fights or action scenes, is I, lo I loved it. Truly a brave and breathtaking choice. 
definitely the kind of movie that inspires animators and story writers. I mean, I'm already trying to replicate that style of animation for my own projects. Now, I haven't uploaded for quite some time, but now on, I'm going to be posting much more often. Movie reviews and my animations that I make. Also want to thank everyone for over a thousand subs. Thanks for watching. Go check out my other videos. And cuts.